So, if we want to switch up the way our text moves around, we gotta get into the pre-comp of the text animation. And now, we need to open the layer and change the range selector of the animator called Position. But instead of opening all the animators and finding this property manually, we can select the layer and type the name of the property we are looking for in the search bar. Now we see all the properties with the name Position. Of course, we are referring to the positions of the animators and not the position of the layer transforms. Now we can change all the animators. In the up animators, let's write 150. And in the down animators, we'll write minus 150. If we want to exaggerate the animation even more, we can change the positions to 180. Let's see how it looks. I think it looks great. Now let's go back to the main composition and see how it looks together with the other precomps. Let After Effects render the preview for a minute. Looks great. Okay, now let's see what we need to do if we want to change the offset of all the layers. Let's say we want the offset to be a bit bigger. To do this, let's go to a point in time where we can see all the layers. Now select all the layers except for the first one. We'll select that layer, hold down the shift key, select the last layer, and move everything two frames forward. Now let's hold down the control key and click on that layer to deselect it. Then we'll move those layers two frames forward as well. Let's repeat this action a few times. Now, as you can see, we have created a more extreme offset between the layers. And now, in order to maintain the perfect loop, let's create new markers according to the new animation. So let's hover over here with the time indicator, select all the layers, right click, go to markers, and delete all the markers we currently have. Then, right click again and create new markers. Now let's capture this frame. Next, we'll try to find that same frame as in the beginning. There, I found the point in time where the frame looks exactly the same as in the beginning. So now let's create markers here as well. Now let's cut this layer from here using the Alt and the left bracket shortcut. Let's bring all these layers back to the beginning of the timeline and see what we've got. So, there you have it, we've created a new loop that works perfectly fine. And now let's see what we need to do to change the behavior of the text animation. For that, we need to go back to the text precomp and change some properties in the animators. For now, let's close all the animators. Now let's open the range selector of this animator and also open the advanced settings. These are the two properties we need to change to make our animation behave differently. And in this case as well, Instead of manually finding these properties for each animator, we can type ease in the search bar and press enter. Now we can see these properties for all the animators. And since we have two animators of the same type, we have animator up and animator up two. We can link the properties of animator up two to the properties of animator up. So let's drag the pick whip of ease high of animator up two and link it to ease high of animator up one. Let's do the same with ease low. Now let's connect animator down 2 with animator down. We'll connect these two properties to the ones we have here. Now we have control over the behavior of the text animation through these animators, and the rest will automatically change. So let's set it to 90 here, and 10 here. Here, let's set it to 10, and here to 90. Now the text moves in a more extreme way. We can go back to the main composition and see how it all looks together. And if we don't like it, we can go back to the text and change the values. 
Both of these can be closed. Let's see how it looks if we change the ease to 85 for both. Let's do the same thing here. Let's see how it looks in the main composition. To see the result faster, we can reduce the preview quality to quarter. Okay, now I'll bring the preview quality back to full. Let's go back to the text and bring back the ease to its original setting. And one last thing we'll do before moving on is, just like we link those properties, let's also link the position properties of the animators. So let's type position again in the search bar and press enter. Now let's link them between the animators. Let's take the position of animator up to, to the position of animator up. And now, let's link the position of animator down to, to the position of animator down. Now every time we change this, it will change accordingly. And every time we change this one, it will change accordingly as well. Just like we did with these. Okay, let's close both of these animators and the search bar. Now let's change the font of the text. I'll change it to the Ezra font. Instead of searching for it manually, we can go to the saved fonts and select it from there. Now click here, and with the up and down arrows on the keyboard, choose a different style. I will stick with bold. And now, let's go back to the selection tool and see how it looks in the main composition. I don't like the current offset. I think it's too extreme. Let's practice it again and change the offset one more time. It's important for me to repeat the same actions because that's how you'll learn this topic in the best way possible. Okay, let's select all these layers and move them two frames back. Now let's hold the control key and click on this layer to deselect it, and move these layers two frames back. Let's repeat this action until the last layer. Make sure you didn't affect the loop of this animation. Let's see it from here, and try to find some unnecessary jumps when the animation is over and starts again. Great, it looks good. And now, let's improve the visibility of this animation by moving the last layer to the side. Let's select these layers and press the right arrow on the keyboard while holding down the shift key. Hold the control key and click on this layer to deselect it. Now let's move these layers to the right. Let's do the same for the rest of the layers. It looks a bit more interesting. And now, let's enlarge the text a bit. For this, we can select only the first layer, press S and set it to 150, or 160. The other layers will scale accordingly, because we link them using the parent and link feature to the first layer. And if you want to change something in the stroke of the text, simply type stroke in the search bar, press enter, and you will see the stroke parameters. Let's open it, and here you can change the thickness of the stroke, or its color. And this will change in the other layers as well because we link these properties, to the properties of the first layer. And now, let's talk about the grid. If you want to make changes to the grid, you need to select the solid layer where the grid effect is applied. Then, go to the effects controls and make the desired changes. And if you want to change the background color, you need to select the solid layer and use the shortcut, Ctrl Shift Y. This will take you to the settings of that solid layer. And from here, you can easily change the color. And then, click OK here, and here. Now we are ready to render it again. Press Ctrl M. Choose to render it in the H.264 format, which is an MP4 file. In Output 2, go to the folder named Renders. Let's select our last render so that the new render replaces it. Next, click on the Render button, and then hit OK. Now we just need to wait until the rendering is complete. To see the rendered output, open the output mode and click on the link here. Let's open the video and see how it looks. Looks nice. Now you can use this animation in your future projects. You can easily replace the text and change the design or the animation in a more convenient and faster way. And if you enjoyed the course, I would greatly appreciate it if you could rate it and provide feedback. 
so I know if you found the course interesting or not. Okay, now let's go back to the project. Let's save the project by pressing Ctrl S. And now, go back to the project panel. For those who don't see it, click on the arrows here and select project. And that's it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it, and I can't wait to see you in the next lesson. But before that, you might want to take a quick break for about 10 minutes. Get up from your chair, stretch a bit, and make yourself some coffee. It'll give you a chance to recharge your brain before the next lesson. See you there.